probably get uh, started off. Um, first of all, thank you all for coming uh, for the <coughs> new and seminar. As I mentioned uh, in my emails, like typically we would like to have these seminars on uh, uh, you know, Tuesdays, uh, first Tuesday of the month. But whenever we have the uh, you know, um, guest speakers visiting, then we have to accommodate according to the schedule. So this is Monday morning, I know, and it's a voting day. But still, I, I, I really thank you all for coming. So uh, we have uh, <coughs> Suda, who is our guest lecturer. And I'd like to pass on to Suresh. Uh, he's the person who is hosting him today. And I thank him uh, for sharing this news with us and then wonder that if we can have a talk. So uh, I'm passing the baby to him. Thank you, Ravi. Uh, good morning to everyone. Um, happy to introduce Professor Yesu Suda. Dr. Suda is a faculty member and a full professor at Kagoshima University in Japan. And um, he is an expert in bio nanotechnology and a member of chemistry and chemical engineering and biotechnology unit at Kagoshima University. Uh, he has many, many inventions from his lab, more than 10 patented technology, and also over 125 peer reviewed uh, journal publications on a variety of diagnostic techniques. Today he's going to share about a few of his uh, expertise uh, and the inventions from his lab. He also has a lab, uh, a company, a venture started from his own lab. As you can see, Sudex, uh, he was telling me that uh, the SUDX does not mean his name. It means sugar diagnostic technology. With this, I would like to welcome Dr. Suda. Thank you. So, good morning. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank to Suresh and Ravi for the kind introduction and the very nice arrangement for us, for me. And uh, actually, uh, this is my second visit to Gulf University. Uh, it's the last June. Uh, since uh, at that time, Dr. Yamashiro organized uh, my seminar, but unfortunately, when I came back to here, I borrowed the, borrow the rental car uh, from Toronto Airport to here. And uh, uh, it was very rare, but uh, my friend, Dr. Nishimura, uh, said to me, yeah, it's uh, for just in case we need to borrow the you know, uh, navigator, navigation. You know. and, uh, but uh, now I think the uh, company is not so good. I borrowed the, that is from Thrifty. It's a cheaper one. <laughs> so I turned on the <coughs> uh, navigator when I, we started from uh, Toronto uh, International Airport. Uh, navigator said, go to here, east. So I'm very wondering because the uh, Gulf is located in the west from the Toronto. But uh, I, I don't know exactly. So I, we follow the you know, navigators. So after one year, one hour, navigator says, yeah, here is a Gulf University, but nothing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> OK. And at that time, I, I was so you know, surprised and very wondering. I have no way. We have no way. Yeah. And, but suddenly, even the car is stopping, uh, navigation is moving. So at that time, I recognized, oh, something wrong is that this navigator. And then we went to the Google and find out it's a totally different direction. <laughs> okay. So from there, uh, we took over quickly as quick as possible. But uh, I, I was so sorry. We are so sorry. We derived the same. Yeah. So sorry. Go <laughs> nasai. But uh, today, uh, I'm very happy. I, I'll be in time because the Ravi's navigator is very nice. <laughs> <laughs> You must come before 15 minutes, I'm here, for 10.45. So Suresh uh, hurry, uh, took me to here, yeah, very in the hurry, yeah. But anyway, uh, I'm very happy to be here and to talk about our recent progress. The name, uh, my title of today, Sugar Chain Based Nanobiotechnology for the Detection of the Viruses. Okay, uh, first, uh, not so many people know where is the Kagoshima. But uh, I hope that many people know about uh, Tokyo or Japan. Yeah. Have you been to to Is there any people who have, that, have never been to Japan? 
It's okay. Thank you. <laughs> All the people know about Japan. But the Kagoshima is located in the south side of the uh, Japan. Here's uh, Taiwan, China, Korea, and here's Okinawa. So the north of, Oki north of uh, <laughs> Okinawa. And uh, the, the Philippines and Typhoon. <laughs> so we have to be careful in the, during the uh, summer and autumn time about the uh, Typhoon. Otherwise, uh, you can't go back to your home. Yeah. Sometimes, because uh, the island is very, very, very beautiful, so I want to go there. But uh, think about uh, return; it's very risky. <laughs> so, <laughs> because of typhoon, and the distance between the Kagoshima and uh, here Gulf, it's a uh, very not close. It's uh, uh, eleven thousand one hundred twenty-four kilometers. So, it uh, takes uh, about. Uh, but from the Toronto. Uh, we have direct flight from to Tokyo, and from to Tokyo to Kagoshima takes 1.5 hours. So not so, not so very far, but even far. The big difference is uh, uh, attitude. <laughs> we are south. Okay. So uh, we, I check the temperature and the weather in Kagoshima because uh, my cell phone to, uh, their information every day to the uh, my cell phone. Now it's a. Uh, Lower temperature, 13 degrees Celsius, upper 28. So still, for, still summer. But anyway, and next one. And uh, this is the Kagoshima University inside the city. No. It's a very rare university because uh, here is a now farm. <laughs> farm is located inside the city. Okay. Yeah. And uh, here are the uh, active volcanoes named Kagoshima, Sakurajima. This is our symbol. Kagoshima. And uh, you can see this kind of a small explosion occurs every day, almost every day. But uh, from here to here, it takes, uh, uh, it's a distance of 10 kilometers, so it's safe so far. <laughs> and but uh, sometimes this big explosion. <laughs> and in that case, uh, this is a double explosion. It's a uh, first uh, five minutes and uh, go up to the about, about 2,000 meters. And then, because the mountains, the altitude is 1,000 meters. And after five minutes, a second one comes. So double. It's so very beautiful. It's very rare. And, uh, uh, but in this case, we, we have to think about the direction of the wind. <laughs> in this case, the wind is from south to north, so we don't need to care, uh, worry about it. If the wind is from east to west, it's a terrible st strategy. <laughs> But anyway, this is a Kagoshima University. So as we are, uh, uh, university is located in the south side, so we have this kind of the palm tree. So just look at this palm tree, it looks like uh, uh, Stanford. <laughs> but a big difference, of course. OK, anyway, <coughs> go to the science. Okay. Uh, this slide shows you uh, uh, a, a type of cartoon of the significance of sugar chains. Uh, this is a cell. Okay. On the cell, we have many, many carbohydrates. In the regular uh, cells, if you look at looks at the cell from the you know uh, from the air, uh, you can see only the carbohydrate. I mean the carbohydrate covers the cell surface, almost all the cell surface, okay. and the sugar chain has many, uh, <coughs> many functions. For example, in the immune system, cell-cell uh, contact is very important stage at the first stage, but uh, in, mediated by the specific interaction between the selectin, named the protein named selectin, and the uh, cyric acid containing sugar chains. So this means if we have no sugar chains on the cell surface, no immunity occurs. No immunity works. Okay. <coughs> and in the second, uh, if when or if this cells turn to the tumor cells, uh, the <coughs> biosynthesis, biosynthesis, the system of the biosynthesis goes crazy. So that's why a uh, very unique short chain of the oligosaccharide is come out. So we, we called it <coughs> tumor antigen. 
And tumor antigen is related to the metastasis of the cancer, also is a big, very good marker for the tumors. And <coughs> uh, my talk today is focusing on this side. Uh, virus likes carbohydrate because uh, virus cannot survive by themselves. So virus needs host cell. And so that's why virus has some uh, specific property uh, binding to uh, cell surface carbohydrate very nicely. So <coughs> after, the, uh, after the binding, to the virus binding to the cell surface carbohydrate or sugar chain, uh, this virus go into the cell and the infection the cells. So <coughs> that was a functional analysis of a sugar chain at the molecular level. Uh, I thought maybe uh, about over 15 years ago, uh, we start uh, uh, <coughs> yeah, sorry, uh, to analyze the bio, uh, biofunction at the molecular level. At, and 15 years ago, I decided to develop the two tool. It's a one tool is named the sugar chips. So <coughs> on the sugar chip, immobilize, uh, structurally defined sugar chains were immobilized on the gold surface in the cluster form, okay, which mimics nature. What <coughs> we did is was we cut out the carbohydrates on the, on the cell surface or make uh, prepared by the chemical synthesis uh, we obtain the structure defined oligosaccharide. And then uh, we develop this kind of the linker. We develop many types of the linker, but this is only one example. We immobilize this linker, uh, sorry, we attach it, this linker to the sugar chain using a uh, <coughs> uh, sorry, uh, some using this reaction. Uh, to, sorry, I remember. <laughs> I don't remember the name. I forget the name. Sorry, uh, but the, uh, I make uh, <coughs> this type of the ligand conjugate. This ligand conjugate possesses this SS bond. This S bond is very easy to react with. Uh, it's a gold, so that's why the immobilization of the, this sugar chain is very easy here. And then we created this kind of the chip. This chip is a one centimeter times one centimeter is a big. And uh, this chip can be used for the sensor chip of the surface plasma resonance. It's a, are you familiar with this SPR? Do you know the SPR? SPR? SPR, surface plasma resonance. This means, uh, okay, uh, I don't have so much time to explain more in detail, but uh, anyway, this is the one uh, physical method to measure the binding interaction without any labeling. <coughs> so, maybe the Bayakoa, have you seen, have you heard the word of the Bayakoa? No? Okay, Bayakoa is one of the surface plasma resonance. Okay. Yeah, in our case, uh, <coughs> by using these chips, uh, we can elute the protein or, for example, the uh, viruses sequentially. Okay. So, in this case, first one is uh, uh, we uh, eluted, in this case, I think BSA, bovicera or albumin, uh, in the uh, one type of chips, uh, there are no, uh, all the black. All the black means that there are no binding interaction. And then after, uh, after washing, and uh, <coughs> we added, we applied the next protein, it's a con cannabarin A, con A. In this case, there are some binding, uh, white dot. White dot means that uh, binding. Uh, <coughs> and then wash and wash and binding, wash and binding, wash and binding. So I said <coughs> we can do using this system uh, high throughput analysis because we don't need to label the protein uh, analyze. Okay. And <coughs> uh, since this immobilization is so easy, I try to uh, create a sugar chain immobilized gold nanoparticle. Just mix with a uh, uh, nanoparticle and uh, this ligand conjugate, we can we can get we could get this kind of the uh, uh, nanoparticle, 
uh, <coughs> this nanoparticle is very water soluble. Okay. So in the water, you can see this kind of the uh, like a red wine solution. But uh, this red wine solution possesses this nanoparticle, and uh, then on the nanoparticle there are some uh, carbohydrate which bind to uh, some type of the protein. When the protein, this <coughs> the carbohydrate reacted or binds to the uh, pr protein, like antibody, <coughs> uh, some, uh, this solution is easy to be this kind of the precipitate. So you can see, th you can see the change visually. So this means the uh, de visual detection. Also, this, kind, this system can be used for the selective concentration. <coughs> so our, the advantage of our system is, is the analysis, or both analysis, is available without any labeling of target molecule. Okay. So that's why uh, we can apply those, our technology to the novel diagnosis uh, technology. Because uh, in the case of the uh, diagnostic system, you can get many, many, many samples because a clinical sample. So you cannot uh, label each some each protein. So that's why uh, without labeling system is very important for the diagnostic system. Okay. <coughs> so next is uh, I'm going to talk about the human Im influenza story. Okay. Uh, we I'm not sure in Gulf. But in Japan, uh, in every season, in every winter, we have epidemic of flu. So, so that's why we were very much, very good educated. You know. So this means how to protect uh, uh, influenza, against influenza infection. So uh, <coughs> we know, keep away from the crowd. We have mask. We, we need to wash hands, or vaccination is important, or uh, most important thing is increase immune system you know, to fight with uh, influenza viruses. But, so we are so well educated, but the question is uh, we take care to protect ourselves, but we, why we have epidemic of flu every year? So, I'm thinking this uh, question, and the one possible answer is flu virus are spreading from asymptomatic patient. Because a real patient is not going to crowd it. Yeah, no, real <coughs> if you have the symptom, very symptom, you stay home and sleep. So you don't, you don't go to the crowded, you know. But uh, if, uh, if, you are, if you think you are not influenza, you go back to the school, or you go back to the business, or, and go to the crowd of people, and spreading. So that's why I think the flu virus are spreading from asymptomatic patient. Or when you go to the hospital, many, many patients there. So uh, <coughs> not so communal infection. Okay. So <coughs> to prevent, uh, to solve this problem, I think the most important thing is an uh, important, important thing is a sensitive, uh, accurate, and easy, and important is a non-painful diagnosis system we need. Okay. <coughs> so I'd like to show a little bit about the video, because not, not so long time, but uh, a little bit. OK. This is uh, what we are doing. It's a summary. So, okay. so this is our, our regular uh, diagnosis. <laughs> you are not familiar with this. <laughs> so, so pain, no painful. So we want to use the saliva instead of the nose swab.
石川教授は砂糖で出来た際、糖砂を持った金属のウイルスを作りました。インフルエンザなどのウイルスは分布されるウイルスの姿です。ライフにウイルスが入った液体でも出せます。ライフの中にウイルスがあると、砂糖の鎖で粒子と聞きます。そうすると、普通のウイルスと比べて、常に押し付けられている。The key is our n a n o p a r t i c l e is smaller than the viruses. I will explain this machine later. So <coughs> uh, now I'm going to explain a little bit more. Yeah. But uh, almost you understand what we are doing here. <coughs> And uh, <coughs> so, as I told you, 
uh, influenza viruses bind to sugar chain using this spike protein named uh, hemagglutinin. And hemagglutinin has some pocket for the sugars for a sugar chain. And then after binding, the virus into, go into the cells and the release of RNA and uh, <coughs> manipulation, and then uh, uh, prepare the virus protein uh, by using a host cell and go out again. And <coughs> but uh, we, are, we use this stage. So this is the first experiment we, I d we did <coughs> for this kind of the experiment. We immobilize this sugar chain. This sugar chain to the uh, gold nanoparticle, this sugar chain is very famous for the binding of human type influenza viruses. And we put, it, put the mixture uh, on the sucrose gradient and the ultra centrifugation. The sugar uh, <coughs> sucrose gradient and ultra centrifugation is a good way to separate or to fra fractionate the viruses. So virus is not so heavy, not so light. So that's why regularly the virus is stopped at the middle of the sucrose gradient. But in our case, in this case, uh, when uh, after centrifugation, we found this kind of the precipitate at the, at the bottom. But uh, <coughs> if we did not add any viruses to this solution, we, you know, we cannot get any uh, precipitate. This means that a nanoparticle is not so very heavy. But uh, <coughs> when we mix with this, uh, uh, sorry, uh, we cut out this cyric acid part and then immobilize on the, uh, the same nanoparticle and added the viruses and mix and then sucrose gradient. In this case also, we did not get any precipitate. So that means uh, this precipitate might be uh, some complex uh, between the nanoparticle and the viruses. And uh, we can uh, <coughs> validate by this uh, precipitate. Uh, it's a TEM image. Is that in TEM image we found this type of the, uh, like a, some mixture? Uh, this white, this white. I'm uh, sorry. Th those black dot is a nanoparticle. Okay. And we found out th those nanoparticles collected in and uh, and covered on the, a kind of the droplet. No. And the, drop, the size of the droplet is about 70 nanometer. It's about a little bit smaller, but the size of the influenza viruses. So from this uh, figure, we concluded uh, this mixture is this. Okay. Be because our nanoparticle is made of, uh, was composed of a gold, so heavier. So heavier, heavier small uh, particle attached to the viruses, so virus is getting heavier. So that's why uh, by just uh, centrifugation, uh, you can get this precipitate. It makes sense. So, <coughs> but the uh, situation is not so easy because type A influenza, especially type A, type A influenza, the binding uh, sugar is very varied. For example, <coughs> Uh, avian influenza binds to this uh, alpha 2 3 type cyclic acid. Human type, human influenza binds to this 2 6 type. Very close uh, structure but very distinct. And <coughs> also uh, in the human type, uh, the, the influenza surface uh, hemagglutin changes the uh, structure a little bit every year. So that's why we need vaccination every year. So this means that <coughs> uh, even the human type uh, influenza uh, binding uh, sugar is different. So this is some example. In the case, uh, this data was not to me uh, by the Dr. Uh, Kiso and Suzuki in Japan. And <coughs> they, create, they prepared five types of uh, oligosaccharide. It's very close structure. And, uh, uh, try to measure the binding affinity to the H3, N2 uh, type, uh, subtype of influenza viruses. And <coughs> so the <coughs> results were very interesting. For example, uh, the IH strain binds to those, this and this and this three oligosac or sugar chain equally. But the Texas strain it binds only this one. 
So this means that、uh, we need to、uh, think about the、uh, better or、uh, best、um, carbohydrate which binds to immobilize on the cell. And we use uh, <coughs> uh, this type of、uh, sugar chip technology. <laughs> we measured totally 242 kinds of.、Uh, Influenza viruses, we culture 242 and、uh, evaluate the binding、uh, property using this chip, all the same chip.、Okay. Uh, this is only two examples, but、uh, this is uh, Osaka strain and H1N1 type harvest in the 2007. And also the same year,、uh, we, uh, this is a strain in the Okinawa, it's a H3N2 subtype. The subtype is different. But、uh, <coughs> in S2, the difference of the subtype, you can see this fair, the same chip.、Uh, as you can see, this pattern of the binding is totally different. No. So, <coughs>、uh, we evaluated 242 uh, experiment results and、uh, screen the sugar chain to which every flu, every flu, else, flu virus binds. And we, <coughs> we obtain, we find out one, this strain, this dot, binds every time very strong. So that is a heparin. So we immobilize the heparin、uh, to the, our gold nanoparticle and、uh, a little bit bigger size, but less than, smaller than the virus, of course, and then go to the next experiment. Okay?、Uh, this is an in vitro experiment. Uh, we mix together with、uh, SGN, our nanoparticle and a test sample containing a small amount of the viruses. And、uh, in this case,、uh, we ex expected this kind of the,、uh, capturing occurs. And then after the spin down,、uh, from the spin down, this precipitate was、uh, isolated and then extracted、uh, to release RNA or DNA. And then go to the PCR. Because PCR, I believe the PCR is the most accurate and the most sensitive way for the <coughs> detection or for the diagnosis. And this is a uh, result. Uh, in this case, if we did not use our system,、uh, the one HAU,、uh, this is、uh, just a concentration, one HAU, the virus is found out at the PCR times CT number is about 30. But、uh, <coughs> when we added uh, our、S、SGNP and to go this、uh, system, the same concentration of the virus was found at the CT 20s. So the difference is 10 times. So 10 times means、uh, sensitivity is 10 times to the 10th. So I mean、uh, over 1,000 times、uh, more concentrated. So this means. <coughs> We can detect the virus at very low concentration, which lies under the detection limit of the regular RT PCR. So, <coughs>、uh, and then we turn to the you know, in vitro, not in vitro, in vivo, but ex vivo experiment.、Uh, we obtained the sample from the, Naza, from the uh, Osaka uh, <coughs> laboratory, uh, <coughs> and it's such a nasal swab from. H1N1 pandemic patient. And we simply diluted the sample with PBS and they measured with our method or without our method. And in, uh, without uh, our method, if we diluted this sample in one, one tenth, we can detect. But、uh, if we、uh, dilute one more, we cannot detect it. But、uh, in here, uh, if we use、uh, our method, Even we diluted 1,000, we can detect the viruses. So, compared to this result,、uh, we can say at least we obtained 100 times more sensitive method. <coughs> okay,、uh, here's a comparison of the sensitivity.、Um, sorry, look at this one also, please. In the case of the conventional kit,、uh, <coughs> The detection limit is about this time. A little bit higher、uh, currently, but、uh, about this、uh, concentration is needed for the conventional immunochromatography kit. But、uh, in case of the regular PCR, 
we, uh, incre we can increase the sensitivity about 5,000 times. But still, our method is more, at least 100 times more sensitive. So compared to this and this, uh, we obtain uh, 50,000 times more sensitive way. So <coughs> that's why I thought we can identify uh, in a symptomatic patient using non-painful sample. That is a saliva. Yeah. And <coughs> And the saliva, uh, but uh, as you know, the sa in saliva, there are many, many, uh, for, the, for example, a mucin, you know, it's a protein. But the mucin in may inhibit the binding of the uh, nanoparticle to the uh, viruses. So we try to uh, <coughs> measure it, uh, with or without uh, saliva, uh, we compare the, uh, you know, uh, first say, we compare the uh, efficiency of the concentration. So we are very fortunate because uh, the difference is no, we have no, we found no uh, difference. So this means we can, I can say, uh, we obtain the similar efficiency also even in the saliva. So that means that we can use our system to the, uh, for the diagnosis. <coughs> okay, so uh, at that time, we, I obtained very good timing in the very good samples. So I'd like to read it. Uh, it's a detection of the type A flu virus from asymptomatic patient in 2009. The story is, <coughs> the situation was uh, a, sick, a student sick for influenza. It's, uh, uh, during a summer training camp of a sports club, a sports club, we call it Gashuku, but a uh, sports club. And uh, so that's why uh, at that time, you remember 2009, we have panic or the uh, influenza. And <coughs> so that's why the camp had to be terminated immediately by the decision of the president of the university. The president of the university said, you must come home, go back as, as quick as possible. So the student come to return to the university and the next day, it's August 20th. So in that case, uh, there are 28 students. You know, all are very fine, all are very fine. No fever, no painful, nothing. So, but, uh, so I, thought, I, I thought, I did not expect we can get some influenza virus from their saliva, but uh, <coughs> we, sample, we did sampling. It's very, very poor sampling, you know. But the next day, we, I was so surprised because uh, okay, uh, eight people has influenza in their saliva. So this means that <coughs> uh, identification of asymptomatic patient who did not seek for influenza. So just, just <coughs> one people is uh, influenza, is around the people, the 28 people in this time, has sometimes influenza viruses. So it's very risky. Okay, <coughs> so this is a result. Yeah, so I, I would like to summarize this by this part. So what we did is the first is the selection of the sugar chain using array type sugar chip, this chip, and uh, those are the machine. This is a spotter and this is a machine. And <coughs> as the virus is eroded, we obtain this kind of the, you know, <coughs> pattern, and we can uh, quantify the white dot and uh, evaluate the, there are strong binding or there are small binding. Okay. In th this is a case of the dengue viruses. And we prepared this kind of the sugar chain. We selected and then mixed with the gold particle. The gold particle captures the viruses, uh, something like this. Uh, this is also a very interesting uh, experiment. Uh, it's uh, just a TEM image mixed with this ionic liquid. Okay. <coughs> and the viruses, and the over the viruses, HGMP attached. This is the influenza viruses, this is the Sendai viruses. And then after capturing, we can separate by using a centrifugation and then or uh, magnetically. And then we, disc we obtain only viral particle, and then from the here, uh, we can. Uh, <coughs> Uh, detect the viral RNA or DNA or just a protein by destructing viral particles with 
detergent or heat. So in this case, our sample is, is partially purified. So we don't need to purify uh, RNA or DNA again using a Kaigen kit. So, so very, very fast. So that's why uh, we evaluated many, many viruses for uh, <coughs> using our system. So oh, mainly human type, but recently we are working on the avian type influenza, also uh, this uh, Poshin, uh, PEDB, or PRSV, or something else. So still, I, I don't have so many time, so I try to uh, explain as much as possible. So oh, I can skip. This is a uh, result of the <coughs> clinical research, but I, I want to skip there here. So uh, <coughs> in the video, the video said we need to uh, shorten the experiment time. So one is a centrifugation is not a good way. So <coughs> we <coughs> change to the, we try to change the gold nanoparticle to the <coughs> magnetic gold nanoparticle. Okay. So we, uh, by the, actually this is not so uh, easy to obtain the small size of the uh, magnetic power, magnetic and gold nanoparticle. So <coughs> maybe it took over the half a year. Uh, finally, we obtained a small size. It's uh, less than 10 nanometer and a good uh, gold and also uh, <coughs> sugar more immobilized uh, gold nanoparticle. And then by using gold nanoparticle, uh, <coughs> this is a uh, method. <coughs> From here to here, it takes only three minutes if you, you use uh, just a pipette. And then at, uh, this is a comparison using uh, our magnetic separation or just a centrifugal Hugel separation. Uh, <coughs> this is a sh the same concentration and then compared to the, <coughs> uh, sorry, compared to the, uh, those two methods. So the value is almost the same. So that means uh, even a little bit better, this one. So uh, by this method, we can say uh, our method using uh, sugar chain immobilized magnetic gold nanoparticle and then capturing and mix with a, a little bit bigger, no, no, a bigger micro magnet is attached here. And then uh, the south, third one is a uh, magnetic separation from the outside of the magnet is very effective way. And so <coughs> we, uh, <coughs> we succeeded to shorten the time. And then the next one, the PCR. The PCR needs time. So regular PCR needs 1.5 hours. So I mean a RT PCR. And so I'd like to shorten this uh, to less than 15 minutes. So in this case, we can obtain the result within uh, 20 minutes. Yeah, <coughs> the, this is a uh, uh, collaboration with uh, uh, Osaka, uh, sorry, AIST in the Osaka, uh, pro Dr. Nagai. Uh, he uh, created this type of the um, PCR machine. It's a handy type. And we uh, <coughs> modified their chips, something like this. In this chip, uh, uh, micro, using a microflow, uh, the solution is come from here to here and here to here. And here is some uh, lower temperature and this is higher temperature. So the solution uh, goes to from the lower temperature, higher temperature, and then go, yeah, one, uh, go and back, go and back. So, so in that case, <coughs> we can shorten the time. Uh, within the 15 minutes, we can uh, achieve the 45 cycles. You know, uh, regularly 45 cycles takes one hour or more. You know. And so this is a simply it's a result. Just look at this uh, the, the red circle. Okay. This is a result by this machine, by this machine. And then this is a just a regular PCR. So all the plus and plus and plus plus. It's a same, all the same. Okay. So we variate it. And the last stage is a uh, avian influenza. <coughs> uh, 
it's a famous uh, you know, news. And uh, we want to apply our technology for pottery or livestock industry by on-site monitoring with high frequency. Because we can obtain the you know, small uh, PCR machine. It's a handy type. And also, we have uh, the good way for the separation of the RNA within three minutes at the on-site. So it might be possible at the on-site. Okay, but uh, I skip. Because uh, <coughs> uh, here's the Kagoshima. Uh, actually, we have very you know, unique few, uh, <coughs> nature. Many, many, you know, over 10,000 cranes came from the Siberia or from Korea. And then here's uh, some uh, we called uh, habitat. <coughs> habitat in Japan. This is the biggest habitat in Japan. Yeah. And, but uh, um, the problem is uh, around the habitat, many chicken farms there. So uh, we had a very sad history. Uh, in uh, 2011, four years ago, uh, one dead crane was found. From the, from the crane, uh, we found high pathogenic AIB. HP AIB was found. And soon after, uh, the uh, people of the uh, office, at the local office, tried to you know, prevent uh, the farm by <laughs> okay, uh, something like this. But unfortunately, one chicken farm, there are, we found HP AIB at uh, one, uh, only one, uh, we are fortunate, only one uh, chicken farm. But even only one chicken farm, over 8,600 uh, birds were killed. And uh, we have, in addition to that, we have very bad economy damage. You know. And <coughs> so from year, last year, I, pa I got some grant and started the collaboration with uh, uh, Dr. Ozawa <coughs> and Dr. Nagai. Uh, and this is a, a summary of the last season. Okay. We, uh, <coughs> we collected the sample at here. The sample is a feces and waters, and mainly this one, weekend or dead crane, and uh, as a dead bird. And all the, bar, all the sample was uh, transferred to Kagoshima University from here to here. Takes about three hours, and then at the Kagoshima University uh, measured uh, RTP by, by using a regular PCR for the HPAIB. And we found totally, uh, I think, uh, 11 uh, HIV was found, were found, and uh, eight, I think, oh no, seven, seven were high pathogenic influenza viruses. Okay. <coughs> and so uh, in this habitat, there are influenza virus. Okay. And also, uh, by using the cultured uh, HIV, we uh, verif verified, uh, we confirmed our system works because uh, it, uh, we can concentrate of the cultured high pathogenic AIV using our system. You know, this is a CR. <coughs> and so also we compared the low, low pathogenic influenza viruses in our lab using uh, our system and uh, regular PCR. The system takes, in this case, takes only 15 minutes. This is 90 minutes, the same result. So <coughs> this is an experimental plan of this season, or just started. Yeah, we try to diagnose the swab sample at, at the Kagoshima University and on-site. On-site means the crane center at Izumi City. Okay, this is a habitat. So the habitat, we, have, we will have many uh, crane soon. And then we found, as soon as we found that weakened or a dead crane, we swab the throat of the cro cro croaka. And those swab was sent to the Kagoshima University in the same way. But uh, on the, some part was uh, measured at the on-site here. Uh, just on, uh, <coughs> this crane center uh, located besides uh, just a habitat at Izumi City. And then in this place, uh, in this you know, small house, uh, 
<coughs> the veterinary uh, doctors uh, measured this uh, using just uh, in this case just a chip takes about uh, 20 minutes from uh, collecting the sample to the uh, getting the result and uh, finally uh, we have succeeded for the you know the special equipment or a more lighter size of the uh, uh, handicap PCR. This is only three kilograms you can handle and very small. And uh, this is the equipment, this size. By using this equipment, you don't need to, you know, pipetting. You know. So much easier. And by using this, those system, we, uh, you know, confirmed our system works very well. Okay. So <coughs> uh, today I don't have any time to talk about this uh, those uh, viruses, but those viruses are very familiar for you. Uh, also, in Kagoshima, it's uh, those two viruses has very big problem. So we try to measure the or diagnose or develop the, some method uh, for the early detection at the on-site. You know, on-site means the farm. We are using a very easy system. Okay, so. Sorry, I talk too much. This is a final sub support. Uh, the last part is covered, uh, supported by Japan Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, and Fishery. The other work was mainly uh, supported by this uh, JSPS and the Japan Ministry of Health, Love, and Welfare. Okay, those are the collaborators. So I have many, many collaborators. And so finally, this is a member of our staff. Thank you very much. Thank you. So that it was very informative and uh, showing you what we did. Um, so I'd like to open it for questions. Hi. My question, is it possible to use your technique to detect some foodborne pathogens, uh, not foodborne, uh, foodborne viruses? Hepatitis A? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And what about the limit of detection? How many virus How many? detected by using the technique? You mean uh, quantified? Yes. I think you, as long as you use, uh, you know, uh, PCR and uh, control, you can do that. Yes. Yeah. And uh, actually, uh, <laughs> actually, uh, hepatitis type A, uh, this, uh, we applied uh, some grants for the uh, Singapore. Because in Japan, type A, uh, HAB was forgettable. <laughs> yeah, no one cares about the HAB. So, but uh, in the Singapore, uh, Singapore eats, uh, let's say, uh, like a seafood. It's, uh, let's say, uh, sorry, I, I don't remember that. Uh, I forget the name of the English. But uh, uh, the uh, f fish was, uh, they, the Philippines, no, Singapore people by purchase the food from the outside. Yeah. So it is very effective, you know. Vice versa is very bad, but you know, if you officially you have if you have some you know viruses, you cannot sell. <laughs> but vice versa, you can you you want to we want to buy as safe as possible. Yeah. So H A B possible. And do you have any idea about this machine, the PCR, the small PCR? When you will get the approval to use that one commercially? It actually, uh, this one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this PCR, you are interested in this PCR. Yeah, we are actually, this PCR was uh, not sell, but uh, start to sell soon. Yeah, I can introduce. They are uh, my co workers. Yeah, uh, they spin, uh, Dr. Nagai uh, spin. Uh, Constructed a new venture business, venture company. Yeah. So. And the diagnostic kits as well? Diagnostic kit, we said. <laughs> yeah. And what about the price for that kit? For example, how much the cost for every single sample to be tested? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, for the influenza, I'm trying, I'm thinking about uh, 30 dollars. 30 dollars. 30 And then uh, it depends on the, in the number. Yeah, if you purchase only one Satsi <laughs> Zara. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. I wonder if you could see how you would sure about your technology can detect new strain of influenza. For example, 
in that case that you presented, it was about H1. For example, in the case of in future, if you have H19, how you would sure that your technology can ah, take that? It's easy. It's easy. So, uh, as long as you, ha you know the primers, primers. It, uh, it depends on the, uh, today, uh, for example, this is, uh, we use, uh, you know, universal A primer. Universal means uh, all the infrared virus possesses the same protein, M protein, you know. We check that the protein. But, uh, for example, H5, N8, or H3, and uh, the, 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 the all the different is the uh, hemagglutinin part. Mm -hmm. So hemagglutinin, so we can, uh, so, <coughs> as long as we know the viruses, we know the, vi we know the gene, so we can, you know, uh, prepare the primers for the uh, PCR. So we can detect. So in the case of new emergence, so first you have to isolate the virus and then uh, prepare the primers and then detect in commercial level. So for example, in you go to the farm and see the uh, dead in influenza and your samples were false negative, so mm. you have to uh, isolate uh, new uh, strain and then design primer to detection? Yeah, so if I part, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, <coughs> actually, in this case, uh, we have four channels, four channels. So four channel means one is a negative control, of course. One is a type A, for example. So in case of the, you know, avian influenza, <laughs> Uh, we uh, put the primer H5 and H7. So we can go directly at the same time. Yeah, yeah. in just case, uh, the plus is a little bit of high. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, I, I thought this is a low affinity binding nanoparticles. Mm -hmm. How stable it is, for example, in the sugar chains you know, after you. Mm -hmm. Attach on the nanoparticle, they mm. tolerate, for example, in one month or two months, or stay like for one year. Uh, uh, your question is how stable the, uh, the, the, yeah. uh, the nanoparticle is. Cheap, yeah. Uh, yeah. As long as you keep it at uh, 4 degrees centigrade in the dark mm. uh, over a year or two years, it's stable. Okay. Mm. Quickly ask you, like, how, how many samples your chip can uh, detect at one go? Uh, regularly, uh, I show the chip is a 96, 96, 96, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So essentially, 90, 96 samples can be uh, yeah. evaluated. Yes, yes. Okay, if there are no more questions. Uh, Join me to thank Dr. Suda for coming over here and sharing his work with us, particularly touching upon the you know, avian influenza site. And thank you all for coming. Thank you. So.